Welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday, brought to you by Idaho Public Television and Montana PBS. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Tech Talk Tuesday with your hosts. I'm Carrie, and, and my uh, partner in crime over here is Nikki Radenberg. We're excited to be talking about all things coding this month. Um, the last couple of episodes, if you've watched them, we talked about why we code. We talked about some unplugged activities. And so today we're going to talk about some of our favorite resources to actually get in and start coding. And so um, we have we have a lot uh, that we love. And so we're going to try and just quickly take you through. Our goal is to give you as many resources as we can. Um, first. So I'm going to share my screen here. Probably the first one um, that we talk often about, and I think we even mentioned a couple of times in the uh, in the previous videos, is PBS Kids Scratch Junior. So this is a coding app um, that is available on any you know tablet, iPad, um, Fire device. Also, it is available on Chromebooks if your Chromebooks can um, download, can access the Google Play Store, which most of the new ones can now, if they've come out in the last couple of years. If they're a little bit older, you might have to check with your IT department, um, but because you actually have to download the app through the Play Store. Um, I love the PBS Kids Scratch Junior app. And so you can see on my screen here, the app itself looks like this. So when you go to find it and download it, I'm going to tell you something that always happens. There are two apps called Scratch Junior that are coding. Um, what, so Scratch Junior was originally created by MIT and PBS asked to partner with them. So the PBS Kids version of Scratch Junior um, has all of the, well, not all, but it has a lot of the PBS Kids characters and backgrounds in it that kids can code just the scratch junior like the mit scratch junior um does not have the pbs kids characters i will say however though that if kids can code on one they can usually code on the other the interfaces are exactly the same i just think that the pbs kids one is more fun because kids know those characters and it has a lot more characters and backgrounds so when you're downloading it make sure you look for the pbs kids version that has this little green pbs kids character on it um and then the app itself is just a, a block coding app. Kids don't have to know how to read to do this. It's just drag and drop connecting the puzzle pieces. So, uh, and it's free to download on any device. So I would encourage you to get in and do, um, explore it and play with it. I'll, I'll tell you that PBS Kids um, tells you, and you can see on my screen here, that it's for children ages five to eight. But I have done this with fifth and sixth graders. Um, and third, fourth, fifth, I've done all the way up to sixth grade and had them be equally as engaged. So um, I always tell people it's a good beginning coding app. So it's good for kids up to fifth or sixth grade who've never coded before. Um, and then, and the other cool thing about this app, and I'll tell you that I had a fifth grade teacher who looked at it and went, I don't, I think that's too little. And I said, just trust me. And I went to her class and coded with their kids and they loved it. So don't be turned off if you think it looks like it's for little kids. Um, you, it can easily be adapted for older kids. The cool thing of, about it also is that there are lesson plans available for you so you're not on your own. Um, there's two places you can find them. And I, I talk quickly about, I'll talk quickly about both of them because they have a couple of different resources um, that you can do. One of them is just pbskids.org backslash learn backslash slash scratch junior. That's the screen you see, or the screen you see up here that I'm sharing with you. And you can see that it has activities here. So these are lesson plans that all kind of follow the same format, which is there's a little video to watch and then the kids code something. So for example, the first one is pig plus cat. The video ends with cat stuck in a tree and the, the kids have to code them down. This comes with parent handouts, um, a certificate to give the kids, how to things. So pretty much everything you need to get started is right here. Um, these are all, this stuff is also available through PBS Learning Media. Uh, there's a script, uh, and if you just 
when you get to learning media, if you just type in the search bar Scratch Junior, um, it will pop up this collection. And here you can see the same, um, the lesson plans are here and all of the videos. There's a few more supplemental resources on this one than on the other site. So that's why I like to show this one as well. So I could talk about Scratch Junior for days. And so I'm not going to, but this is um, probably one of my favorites. And, and I have found that kids love it because they know the characters and they think it's really cool that they get to code like the Wild Kratz and Arthur and um, all of those things. So if, if you have um, some time over Christmas break, <laughs> uh, check this out, PBS Kids Scratch Junior. And uh, again, there's lesson plans available. Um, and then another uh, really great resource, and, and this is, I mean, they have them for a lot of age groups, but Khan Academy has some, has coding resources available. Um, I typically would say that this is for older kids, um, and I use this as a fifth grade teacher, so it's just, you can just go to khanacademy.org. I actually am in Hour of Code right now. Um, the Khan Academy Hour of Code, but I looked under the um, the courses right here and and looked for computing. So uh, computing, and then um, there is computer programming, which does do some kind of gaming and visualization. But there's also this um, this Hour of Code that they can draw. The kids can draw. Now this is a JavaScript type of coding, and so that's why. It's a little bit better for older kids than, you know, kindergartners typically can't do JavaScript. Um, and so uh, this is just one of those places. They also have one about to start creating web pages and to start creating databases. And so I actually think this is a really great place to go if your kiddos are um, a little bit more advanced. And the cool thing is it has a tutorial. It steps you through it. Um, and so really the kids could go here. And, and kind of work through this and, and learn how to code on their own as well. So there's other resources again available on Khan Academy, but I recommend you check it out, um, usually for a little bit older kids. And then the last resource that I'm gonna share, and I know that I think Nikki said in one of them that we always share free resources. We almost always do. Osmo is not free, but I will tell you that we don't share resources that you have to pay for unless we feel like they are really worth paying for. So Osmo, if you are not familiar with Osmo, um, you can see right here that um, it's uh, an interactive um, platform for kiddos. It, you can use an iPad or uh, Amazon Fire tablet, and they even have little um, ones for your phone now, if you have an iPhone. Uh, and maybe an Android, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, so you typically tell it, you know, what device you want to use. And then you can order a lot of things. They have a coding starter kit um, that you can see here. And this is a really fun one for kids as well. So they put these sort of, you know, direction blocks and how many times they want it to go that direction. They lay them out in front. And then they hit the button and it starts their little guy moving through um, the maze. There's a couple of different things. There's a game where they have to code to get the guy to like eat the strawberries or, you know, whatever. Um, this is a great one again, and you can see that it's designed for ages five to 10. So this is a good one for younger kids who don't need to know necessarily how to read, um, but then it's great for, you know, up into to, um, older kids as well. You can see that you do have to pay for them um, and you do have to have the base on the little camera mirror thing on top. If you watch those and you can see right now on this website that um, they, it's 30% off, they frequently have sales that you watch, you can get this on. Um, there is pricing for schools if you wanted to purchase this as a whole school. So um, this is one of the, the ones that it is, you do have to pay for it, but I think it's worth it. I love it. I think Osmo is a, a really great interactive um, resource that kids love. They have two different coding ones. They have the coding starter kit and then they have one called coding obby. Um, 
And so you can kind of look at, and then there's, oh, look, there's even more. Ha, huh? what do I know? There's Coding Jam and Coding Duo as well. They've, uh, so they all kind of do different things. And you can see it even tells you the Coding Jam is intermediate, the Coding Duo is advanced, and the Obby one is really your basic starter, um, starting coding um, uh, concept. So these are, again, just, and I'll tell you something, kids will figure it out pretty quickly. You just put them in front of it and they'll figure out what they have to do. Um, and so those are some of my favorites. I'm gonna stop sharing and let Nikki share her favorites here. Um, but I hope that you'll take a minute and explore those. All right, Nikki, do you wanna share some more? Yeah, I was just going to hold up the coding kits. I think what I also like about Osmo is that everything comes in these really sweet little boxes, um, which is really easy for kids to pick it up and put it away when you're done. Um, and it's an easy storage. And they're that plastic pieces, so you could wipe them off really easily with a wet wipe. So um, definitely a, a fun thing. And honestly, if you saw on that, it was, I think, what, $60 to get started. And they do work with your Kindle Fire tablets, which are, I think I bought one of those for about $45 for a prize recently. So you could get into that for $100. So if the parent group or something gave you a scholarship to buy some things. I always used it as a learning center in my classroom. And when I taught fourth and fifth grade, we used this. We went and borrowed the iPads from the K1 and, and we set this up as a learning center, um, either during math time or sometimes during our genius hour and makerspace time. So definitely love the, the Osmo. I'm, I'm going to set up as a learning yeah. center because they are, you do have to pay for it, but you don't have to have an individual one for every kid. In fact, mm -hmm. kids love it to be able to sit together and figure it out together and play the game. And so using it as a collaboration tool, just getting a couple for your class that you can use as a center, or even like Nikki said, even one. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend with, you know, a couple on, they, they get more out of it if they can collaborate for sure. So, um, so the ones I share, and if you watched our last session, we shared about Hour of Code, um, and that is happening, I, I believe the week of, what did we say? Um, Kind of December, 6th. Down. December 6th so it's Day coming up as, at the time 6th. that this is coming out it may have passed <laughs> but That's true. either way you can do it you can do it this is a great website to find resources for coding and so that's why we put it up here um, you can find your activities and this is if you're looking for I want to code for an afternoon like just I want to uh, something quick that I can do and so you can click activities and as you can see, you can search by pre-reader, grades two through five, six through eight, all the way up to nine plus. And this is going to give you usually some web-based um, resources, uh, websites, but you can go by your sort by your technology. So if you have Android tablets or if you have iPads, you can search by the hour of code options that are available in your grade level and by your device. And so this is a great way to get started. When I started coding with my students, we started with Codable. And that was really the only thing at that time, a bazillion years ago, that was available for our youngest learners to code. And Codable has a backstory in that these little fuzzies are on a spaceship and their spaceship crashes and they land in this world that is in the grass is so high that these little fuzz balls can't see anything around them except for these blue mazes. And so they roll through these mazes. And kids need to give them commands in the way of these arrows that they drag up into the tool area. And the kids can go through the mazes that look like this. Now, Codable is not free. You do have to purchase a subscription to use the full version. However, it is free enough, I think, to get it started with your kiddos. And if they really get going with it and you want to purchase a full subscription, then you have access to some higher level things. Um, for what I've done recently, I, I've found coding the, the first couple of levels to, to get the point across. But it is also aligned to a computer science curriculum 
And if your school was looking to purchase something like that, there is a whole set of lessons that goes along with it. I know here in Montana, we do have computer science standards now. And so schools are looking for curriculum to adopt. And so Codable is an option for our youngest learners, but also is really great for older kids as well. We use this on tablets and we use it on iPads in my classroom, but it does work on Chromebooks and um, other desktop computers as well. So the other one that we've talked about before is code.org. And this one I think is the most used and pretty widely known. And it is also a full curriculum to be used with, um, go kind of look at the course catalog here you can go from elementary school all the way up to high school. So if you're looking for coding experiences for your students, you can take these by courses, whether you're elementary, middle or high school. But they've also got, if you're not looking for so, something as in depth as the full curriculum, they do have this hour of code section and you can do something like dance party. Um, these are nice because when you click on these, it takes you through, there might be a video that you can watch that, get, that it describes things. The videos that are embedded into the site feature famous coders, um, people in the industry that learned about coding. So there is some career connections for students as well. This uses, you see how it walks you through everything that you need to do. So we would just drag these blocks into the puzzle pieces like this and then we click run when i played it i'll do it again and just, I'll, I'll endure the sound oh, when i played it this little kitty sound moves um but then it also shows you exactly the directions up here what the setup is um and you can click on that you can give you directions. And also when you click show code, it'll give you what those codes are, like what's behind all of those blocks. And it just walks them through some of these created things, how to create some of these. So this is an example of a lesson. These tend to work best on your desktops or your Chromebooks. Um, they're a little bit more challenging on the iPad. So that's code.org. Hour of Code and Codable. I think that was everything I was going to share, isn't it, Carrie? So that's Tech Talk Tuesday for this week. Hopefully, you found some cool resources to get coding started in your classroom. And we'll see you next time. Bye.